Hello and welcome to another edition of For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. My guest is the first time around the show. His name is Richard Porth. He is the president and CEO of the United Way of Connecticut. And we welcome you to the show. So welcome. Thank you, Sean. It's good to be here. Uh, we're going to get into some stuff today like Alice, for example. But before we do, I just want to maybe a little background on the United Way so people can understand what it is and what you do. Thank you. I, I, I'm glad to. Uh, United Way is a nationwide movement. It's been around for over 100 years. And it's based on a very simple idea. People from a community of all, you know, rich and poor and everybody in between could chip in together uh, towards a community campaign. And then their neighbors, leaders in the community, could make decisions about how to allocate those funds to the, uh, for, for things in the community that can serve people. In recent years, United Ways across the country have focused on education, income, and health and have really worked towards uh, community impact. In Connecticut, we have 15 local United Ways who serve uh, cities and towns across the state, and the United Way of Connecticut, where I work, we serve as the state association for the local United Ways. In, in the New London area, it's the United Way of Southeastern Connecticut, and they do lots of great work for the community. So and a lot of it is uh, uh, working with nonprofits, mm -hmm. right? And so they'll basically what they'll do is they'll come to you and ask for maybe like a, is it called a grant, basically? Right. Uh, and so they'll submit a grant, and then your, your, a board will kind of look it over and decide if it's, uh, uh, if it's a good idea, and then they'll grant the grant, basically. Right, right. and that's the traditional model of United Ways, where uh, people, uh, nonprofits and c good, strong community partners apply for funding, and an allocations committee uh, connected with the United Way. P volunteers from the community meet and decide the best way to use um, the United Way's money in that community. In recent years, United Ways across the country have tried to uh, build on that traditional model, which has always been successful, and also provide uh, more community engagement and, and um, more opportunity for volunteering. Um, and so now United Ways, uh, their, their call to action is give, advocate, and volunteer. They're trying to engage people from all walks of life to do things um, as a community and to work towards the common good. You know, we, we have a lot of nonprofits on this show, and, you know, over the years, obviously there's been an economic downturn before we are coming out of it now, and I always ask them, and they always say, uh, you know, obviously money is tight. That's coming from their side when they're trying to get money, but what about from the United Way's point of view during the recession and all that? It's a great question, Sean, and um, I think, uh, like like everyone, really, uh, the recession was, was tough, um, and charitable giving went down for lots of different organizations, and I think for, uh, that, that's true for a number of United Ways, but uh, we're, we're working, building our way back up again. Uh, people in our communities across the state, they're generous people, and um, it, United Ways are a way that people are used to contributing and being part of the community, and, and so our, our local campaigns and all the related leadership and community engagement work we do have really been building up again. Uh, are there a lot more people and a lot more organizations asking or, or, or inquiring about help? Uh, always, yeah. always. And um, again, in recent years, United Ways have tried to focus on, on three very specific areas, actually four, uh, education, income, and health. And the fourth one in many places is basic needs, trying to help families who are struggling. And that is turning out to be, you know, more important than ever, in, you know, as we, uh, you know, were in the uh, the economic downturn that we were in. Absolutely right, Sean. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we're going to get into today is Alice. It is assisted um, or asset limited income um, constrained employed. That's basically an acronym. Uh, so talk about it a little bit. Right. Uh, th this whole idea, uh, United Ways uh, have been on the front lines with our great community partners, lots of good nonprofits. We've been on the front lines for a long time now. And so we, we have noticed uh, over time that there are more and more people, it seems, that work hard and still struggle to get by, really still struggle financially. And um, uh, a United Way leader in New Jersey actually first came up with the idea a few years ago 
to take a closer look at, at this group of people. Uh, and um, he engaged Rutgers University to do a research report for them. And the goal of the report uh, for, uh, for Alice, Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed, for us here in Connecticut and for, five, for United Ways in five states now, the goal is to understand more about why Alice families struggle, why good working people still struggle to get by, and, and what that does in terms of their ability to get ahead, the choices they have in life, uh, their opportunities for adva advancement to pursue the American dream. So, so the, the, the Rutgers study, the Alice study, attempts to understand more about what's underneath that issue and then also the impact that it has on the community as a whole when more and more families struggle even though they're working hard. Just to expound on it a little more, this is designed to study the household that isn't necessarily the out-of-work household or the, uh, the low-income household. It's a, it's a household that is maybe getting by but because they're at a certain income level, they might not necessarily qualify for, for certain things that, that certainly should be, be able to have been taken advantage of to be able to help them just a little bit to get that kind of a step up and be able to advance I a little think, bit. I think that's right, exactly right. Uh, one, of, one of the things that we believe is that the, the traditional way of measuring financial hardship, the federal poverty level, is outdated, and it doesn't, it really doesn't, measure the whole scale or scope of financial hardship in our state or anywhere in the country. And, um, and so Rutgers, in doing the Alice Report, provided a couple new tools, and one of them is called the uh, Household Survival Budget. And it's a, it's, it's a budget that's made up of about six categories in any family's um, um, costs, uh, uh, cost of living. And, and estimates, I think, fairly conservatively what it should cost for a family of two working adults, an infant and a toddler, what it should cost them in any given year to get by to make ends meet. And that's, and, and people who fall below that threshold, what we say, what we call the Alice threshold, uh, are in financial hardship, along with people uh, who, who fall below the federal poverty line. And so altogether in Connecticut, 10% of our households are below the poverty, the federal poverty line, which is, you know, pretty good compared to most places right, around right. the country. Connecticut's right. good that way. I think our unemployment level is, is getting up. It's, uh, it's improving. Right? It's improving. Yeah. And, and um, you know, we've always been a fairly wealthy state right. overall. And but did that affect it. the cost of living uh, situation? That's exactly right. So, so because, part, partly because of that cost of living in our state, well, um, while we have a relatively lower poverty level, 25% of our population are above the poverty level but below this Alice threshold. Uh, so yeah. uh, the Rutgers report, the Alice report, tells us that you know, more than a third of the households in our state are struggling, even though um, many of them, most of them, are working hard. And uh, how do we compare to the other states that the Rutgers did the study on? It's a great question. Um, because their cost of livings might be different in some of those states, right? It, that's exactly right. It's a great question. So this year, United Ways in six states did the study. New Jersey, the original one, us uh, in Connecticut, California, Florida, Indiana, and Michigan. I'm glad they kind of went around the country. They were yeah. all over the country. Yeah. And uh, Rutgers estimates that those six states comprise almost a quarter of the whole country's population and it represents about 200 United Ways, a lot. And it's a great question that you ask. We have the highest cost of living among the six states and um, in a minute I'd love to go into a little more detail on the things that are the most costly for our families. Um, but, but, uh, uh, but we also have um, the highest median, or one of one of the highest median uh, hourly wages in the country, and the highest among the six states that I just mentioned, and so didn't we just pass a, a wage minimum wage mm -hmm. increase that's going to go into effect? Mm -hmm. Is it 2015? Or? Right, the governor okay. and the legislature um, signed and passed into law uh, a new minimum wage bill, which will phase in over uh, the next couple years. Um, a, an increase up to $10.10 .10 an hour. 
which will be one of the best in the country. Um, but so, you know, to your question, we, we, it's harder for Alice families in, in our state to pay the bills on the cost side, especially for housing and child care, two big uh, and costly categories for them. Um, but on the other hand, on the income side, uh, workers in our state tend to make more than in most other states. And that's another part of the report that I'd love to talk about um, in a couple minutes, if possible. Absolutely. Uh, so th we've got a lot to get to. Um, why don't we take a break now? This is a good time to, to I'll have you give out the website. Uh, what's a website for people to go and learn more? Uh, we, we have a website dedicated especially to our ALICE project, and it's um, alice.ctunitedway.org. What's on the website for people to go and see? They can download the full report that Rutgers prepared for us and for um, the other states, uh, and they can learn more about what United Ways are trying to do to help Alice and how they can help as well. All right. Uh, Richard Porth, the president and CEO of United Way of Connecticut. We definitely have a lot more to get to, so we'll take a short break and come back. I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Stay with us. Welcome back to For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. My guest is Richard Porth, President and CEO of United Way of Connecticut. We are talking about Alice, asset limited, income constrained, employed. Uh, one of the things uh, I want to allow you to spend a couple of minutes on, you were mentioning you know, the cost of living in Connecticut and maybe get a little bit more specific on some of those costs. You mentioned housing. Right. Uh, that was one of them. Uh, let's talk right. about some of the costs. Thanks, Sean. Sure. So in the household survival budget that, that was developed for the Alice report, they looked at housing, child care, food, transportation, health care, taxes that Alice families pay, and then a miscellaneous category, which is equal to 10% of the rest of the budget. Check this out, okay. Sean. Housing represents 21% of a, of a household survival budget. It costs a lot. So to buy, to have a mortgage, or even, how about, is or that even including rent. rents? Even yeah, rents? It's, okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a combination of all those. And then even more expensive for a young family, two working adults and uh, an infant and a toddler, more expensive is child care. Yeah. Cost, and, and together, housing and child care take up almost half of the family's household survival budget. It could be argued that child care is so expensive that it may be more cost uh, conscious for one parent to just stay home with the child as opposed to go and work and pay for the child care it may not the math may not work out sometimes that that's yeah. what happens sometimes that's what happens and um, you know I, I think that the, the 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 hope is that we could work together all of us and look for more ways to provide more affordable housing and more affordable child care so that parents, families, uh, the, the, the adults in the family can go to work and can contribute towards their, their families. The housing market, that was like the first indicator of the recession that we went into. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, you know, obviously seem to be coming out of it now, but it sounds like housing, this may be a buyer's market, but housing is still expensive. Housing is, is still expensive. Um, uh, and and um, I, do, I do believe that the state uh, has, has, has made some good progress in recent years t toward uh, incentivizing uh, the construction or the provision of more affordable housing. But it's clear from, from our study, and frankly from other studies as well, that housing is still a, a real hurdle, a real challenge, a real, um, uh, it, it creates real, real stresses and strains on household budgets. and. Uh, that's certainly the case for um, Alice families. It certainly could be one of the biggest expenses, right? Yes, yeah. it is. It's one of the biggest. All right. So, housing, child care. What else? Uh, the you know the, the others are are significant, but but we uh, you know again I mentioned food and, yeah. and that's significant. Gas that's, prices are very high in Connecticut, even though the price is dropping. It, it is everywhere. Still, relative to other states, it's still pretty expensive. That's right, um, and and. and um, Health care, which is uh, a little more expensive than other places, it seems to be improving in recent years. And uh, I, but but again, 
the real focus, and, and here's, here's the thing about the, the, the ALICE study. It goes into a lot more detail than, than other studies have so that we can get a better picture of what specifically causes the stress and strain for ALICE families. And if we can, and so instead of just throwing our hands up and saying it's too big a problem, we can't fix this, we can look at the most important problems on the, on the cost side of the equation, and that's housing and childcare. So our hope in the United Way system is to really get people thinking about what, what are the ways we can make housing and child care more, 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 uh, more affordable in this state. Uh, on, the, on the income side, we started to get into this a little earlier. Right. This is jobs in Connecticut, the pay compared to some of the other states. And the, and the, the differences are significant, right? Right. So the Rutgers report, the, the Alice report, found that 51% of all the jobs in Connecticut pay $20 an hour or less. And a, and, a, and a good number of those pay $15 an hour or less. And that number, you know, it looks somewhat alarming when you first look at it. But the fact of the matter is that I think we need to keep this in perspective. Connecticut still has one of the highest um, uh, uh, median hourly wages in the country among all the states. And what that means is that we have more higher paying jobs than most other states. So, for example, the Alice study was done in Florida and Indiana as well, where they found that 69% of all jobs, almost 7 out of every 10 jobs, pay $20 an hour or less. And so we believe that in Connecticut, because we've had a historically strong and competitive position in uh, uh, professional, managerial, and technical jobs, that that the strategy of career advancement, climbing the ladder, moving up the ladder, can work here in Connecticut better than it can in a lot of other places because we still have higher paying jobs. But there, the challenge is to make sure that more families in Connecticut, more people in Connecticut have access to post high school, uh, you know, higher ed or, or advanced training in manufacturing and other uh, middle skill and higher skilled jobs. But it can be done in Connecticut in a way that it might not be possible in other places. And so we're hopeful that that's, that could be part of our solution. The unemployment issue might be different in some of those other states that you mentioned too, right? Like uh, for us in Connecticut, it, you know, it, it's there, but we talked about this already. It's improving. The, the number of unemployed is going down a bit. Now, right. I don't know about those other states. Yeah, and to be honest, I don't know either. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know for sure what the unemployment rates look in some of these other states, but ours is improving. And uh, again, we, we, want to, we want to share this information in a way that more people can be aware of the fact that a large part of our population, a lot of our friends and neighbors, suffer this, you know, deal with financial hardship, but present it in a way that people can also believe, as we do, that there are solutions, that we can fix this if we work together, both on the cost side with housing and child care, but also on the income side with what families earn by providing more training, more opportunity for advancement up the career ladder. Uh, depending on the different United Way locations around the state, do they have different issues that they're dealing with? You know, maybe Fairfield County may be different than southeastern Connecticut as far as issues, whether it be jobs. Obviously, there's an income difference there, too. Right. So. Uh, at United Way of Connecticut, we serve as the state association for the 15 local United Ways, but we also run United Way 211 for the whole right. state of Connecticut. And so, and we're 24 7 operation, never shut down. Uh, you know, last year we got more than uh, 400,000 calls. Can you uh, explain 201 a little bit for people so they understand what it is? Sure. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, contact center, it's a place that people can turn to access information and to get connection to any type of health and human services that they might need. You can connect them to the right place. Right. Yeah. And we took, as I mentioned, tens of thousands of calls uh, from across the state. Every city and town in the state called us. And, um, uh, and, and um, we can track the reason people call us. So, for example, Sean, and I think this goes to your earlier question, the, the most common reason that people called us was related to housing. They were either worried about losing their housing or uh, they needed help um, uh, with uh, some sort of housing-related cost. Second on the list was utilities. 
That's the second most common reason that people called us because they, they, were, tr they were struggling trying to pay for their utilities and keep their homes warm and so forth. Uh, uh, third was um, uh, mental health related issues, uh, then financial assistance, uh, food was fifth or sixth on the list and so on. Right. So we can track region to region and statewide what the most prevalent reasons people or needs that people have. And we share that information with state leaders and local leaders and uh, we, we believe it helps them to understand too what's going on in communities and how we can be the most helpful in helping uh, families, especially now with this Alice work that we do. What is the best, you know, coming on this show, it's a great way to kind of get the word out, but, but I know that you want to sort of put a face on Alice and kind of, you know, so people, you want them to know about it, to be able to reach out and be able to take advantage or utilize some of the services that are available. How do you do that? Thank you, Sean. That's exactly right. The other thing, once we realized the scale of the problem, 25% of our households um, fit this Alice um, uh, description. Once we, once we understood that, we also came to understand that Alice, Alice lives in every city and town in the state. Alice, um, Alice is the dad who worked for 15 years in a good paying job, lost it because of downsizing through no fault of his own, and now can't find a new job that pays him at the same level. Alice is the, the single mom with a couple young kids who's struggling to hold down the job at the office and still take good care of her kids. Alice is the young college graduate who has $30,000 in debt and can't make enough money to pay off his debt and set up his own home. Alice is the retired couple that worked hard, played by the rules, but lost some money, some of their nest egg in the recession, and now can't pay all their bills. Alice is, um, you know, our neighbor, our, our friends, our co-workers. Um, Alice could be our brother or sister, people we know and, and, and love. And that's, that's the other thing we want to try to communicate to people, that we want to put a face on Alice, let people know that Alice are, are our friends and neighbors, and they're working hard just like we are, and they deserve some help um, and, 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 a, and, a, and, a, and more opportunity to take care of their families and to move up the ladder. Uh, is your job any different now as we uh, taped this coming into the holiday season? Uh, is there a greater need? Maybe you'll get more 201 calls about, you know, heating assistance or things like that? It is. And, you know, for example, the United Way in the New London area, United Way of Southeastern Connecticut has uh, the Gemma Moran Food Distribution Center, something to be very proud of. We just of. did a show with them. Yeah, yeah great something people. to be very proud of. Um, it's an amazing service to the community, an amazing facility, and you bet they're busy right now, you know, collecting donations and making sure it gets out to people who, uh, who need that help. That's, a, that's just one example, but, and there are others acro across the whole state. All the local United Ways are, are, are involved in different degrees to, to trying to help with basic needs for Alice families and anybody who needs help, uh, no matter what walk of life, and also to um, help with uh, help uh, with budget co coaching and asset building uh, strategies and helping people file their earned income tax credits and get you know to make work pay. There's many different strategies that United Ways across the state are using to help out families that are that are struggling financially. If someone's watching this and they have questions or concerns, would you encourage them to call, whether they have a need or maybe even just a question, right? Absolutely. Please call two one one, and and we can, and we and we would be glad to help as best we can with whatever kind of issue uh, someone may have. Connect them with local resources. And here's the thing. <sighs> We get calls every day, lots of them, from, from, uh, uh, from people who are looking for help. Uh, say they're looking for a food pantry, and we might say, all right, where do you live? And the caller will say, don't send me to my local food pantry. I've been contributing to it for years, and now I'm embarrassed. I'm in a position I need help, and, and uh, so tell me the one two towns over. And our, our People in 211 say, look, at, you've been working hard, taking care of people. Maybe it's your turn to get a little bit of help. And, and so we'll do that referral to the next town over or two towns over. Pride is a tough thing to pride's get. To, a, pride's yeah. a hard, and that's a big part of this, too. There's these, no, nobody wants to, to, to be reliant on other people. Uh, at least that's been our experience. And 
Um, and, and so uh, it's not easy for people to ask for help when they're in a crisis or, you know, in, in danger financially. All right. Let's take one more break and come right back. I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Stay with us. So that is our show for today. Um, why don't you give out the website, Richard, one more time for people to go and learn more. Sure. The, the website address is alice.ctunitedway.org. And uh, they can always call 211, right? And that's always staffed and manned. 24-7. People can call any time of the day or night. Pleasure having you on the show. Richard Porth, the president and CEO of United Way of Connecticut. We learned a lot today. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Sean. You can see this show and many others on our YouTube site. Until next time, I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Take care.